Good evening. Good evening. We are so delighted that you have joined us this evening for uh, this concert. <laughs> I hope that you all got an opportunity to go over and have something to eat. We want to say thank you to our church caterer, our official church caterer, Phil Depot. <laughs> hope you can hear that in there, Phil. <laughs> we thank him. He did all that on his own. We just thank him for doing that. He's a wonderful blessing for us. Most of the time we don't hear him. He just sits over there quietly, except when he's cooking or singing. And thank goodness we can hear him sing with a great singer, too. But we also have some other singers here tonight, and we are delighted to have them. Um, just before they come up, would you pray with me just for a moment? God, we just want to take a deep breath. And in this moment, we breathe in your spirit one more time. We breathe in your holy presence into our lives. And we thank you so much, God, because every time we come to your house, you greet us with open arms. And you say, you're welcome and you're safe in this place. God, we praise you that we have the opportunity to be here. And we thank you for this wonderful, wonderful team of singers that has come here to bless us this evening. We ask for your anointing to be on them and flow through them and let us sense your presence throughout this whole evening. And God, we just came here expecting a blessing. And we came here to be a blessing. So God, help us not to fail on either count because we know you're right here with us. God bless Linda and Susie tonight in this concert. In the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. Amen. And would you welcome to the stage, I'm going to let them tell you more about them, but those of you that are here know Sean Thomas. Most of you know Sean Thomas. And they have been <laughs> recording with Sean, and he is. Um, he said, you know, you've got to have these ladies. You've just got to have them. Well, I've heard you at, at, at conference, uh, but I, I had not scheduled you, and I'm glad that Sean kind of, nudged and said, well, you need to have these ladies. And of course, having such a butch masculine presence up here in the pulpit <laughs> most of the time, I knew that it's, it's always wonderful. Thing. That's for you, Ray. And, that's all, and it's always wonderful when we can have some wonderful ladies grace us in the pulpit. So would you welcome Linda and Susie Bre um, Brenner Brexted Beckstead Ministries. I know. Susie and Linda. Well, thank you. It is very complicated, you know, and uh, we didn't think about that when we named it that, so we've decided that Susie and Linda is going to be our new name for our group because uh, it's so much simpler than because people say Benner Brexted and all kinds of things. So anyway, <clears throat> to start out with, uh, how many people believe that God is good? All right, amen. amen. <clears throat> well, this is a song by Crystal Lewis, and it's called God's Been Good to Me. Get us started here tonight. God's been good to me. Oh, God's always been good. To me, oh God's always been good. Now this is me, don't always say the right thing, but I try, don't always live my life the right way. God is faithful to forgive me when I fail or when I fall. I am unworthy of it all. Still he keeps on giving. God's been good to me. Oh God's always been good. God's been good to me, oh God's always been good My God has given me more than I ever dreamed A precious family and friends who care for me Why does he love me so, of that I'll never know I am unworthy of it all, still he keeps on giving God's been good to me, oh God's always been good that all right God's been good to me oh God's always been good well, it would 
would take hours and days at a time for me to sit down and write all the things he's done. Now let me say this, that it's nothing I've done, but it's the grace he gives freely to everyone. God's been good to me. Oh, God's always been good. Put your hands together. Here we go. God's been good to me. Oh, God's always been good. And that's what we're supposed to do is go tell everybody. God's been good to me. Oh, God's always been good. Tell everybody. Everybody has to know. God's been good to me. Oh, God's always been good. Amen. I love it. We're in a house of clappers. I, I love that. That's not always the case. Sometimes I'm the only one clapping, and then it's dangerous because yes, I'm no. not good. Yeah. Uh, all right, so there are people who introduce us as the singers. Did you notice I never picked up the mic when I came up? I've been banned from microphones in my singing voice. I told Danny if she starts singing and the microphone's on, turn it off. I know. I, I apologize. Because people think it that we true. sing together, but it's... Only in the car. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's actually a true story. I'm the storyteller of the two of us, and uh, we both have stories to tell tonight. But uh, sometimes people will actually get us mixed up, if you can believe that. And on more than one occasion, people have asked us if we're sisters. And uh, maybe for some of you who are couples out there, that's happened to you before to see, ask if you you're start siblings. start looking alike. Oh, and, but this is the best. Uh, on more than one occasion, we've been asked if we're twins. Now, seriously, right. does, does she look like me? More than, I mean, it's amazing <laughs> people <laughs> say that. We're together. And we're standing right next to each other and ask if we're twins. No, and w no secret language, nothing like it's that. It's that emotional tie we have. Yeah, I think it is. But the way you can remember is that Susie is the singer. And Linda is the lip sinker, so <laughs> you'll see me singing without the microphone all the time. Well, we are very excited to be here, and Sean is definitely one of our good friends. So, Pastor, thank you very much for uh, opening your church to us. This will be a fun concert tonight. Uh, I have two stories to tell you. First of all, uh, Pastor was telling us about your piano and the story behind your piano. I got ready to take the picture of the Billy Joel signature, and Susie's reflection was in the picture. I said, get out of this picture. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's a beautiful piano, and yes. it sounds excellent. You're going to just love that. Susie's going to play on it a little bit later. But uh, my favorite story coming into, uh, we, we flew into New Orleans, right? To yes, Fran and I told you this story. Yes. So oh, you already yeah. got these. Uh, so we flew into New Orleans, and we were getting our, our rental car, and I'm waiting out with the luggage, and, and Susie does all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, she is supposed to be the driver. Susie's always the driver, and, but it's in my name. And so how does the story go from there? What did they uh, – since I wasn't there, it's your Well, story. it was very complicated, but to get through the complicated stuff, uh, it was very funny because the lady said uh, – she goes, oh, your significant other, she can drive too without having to sign, you know, without having to pay money. Because usually, unless you're a spouse, right. you have to have an additional driver, and you have to pay so much per day. And I was like, really? And she said, yeah. And I said, wow, in Louisiana even? <laughs> you know, I We're was so shocked. We're so excited about that. I was shocked. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened in any state so far, so I'm really no, that happy about first. that. That yeah. is the first. And uh, you know, oh. we are legally married in five states. I because think we got Oh, it's more than that now. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We got married in Iowa, and we got married on the first day that it was uh, okay to do that. Uh, you had to wait three days, and uh, we got married on the courthouse steps. So. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, Pastor prayed you in. I'd like to pray for your church, and so would you join me in prayer, please? God, we lift up this service to you, God, because we just love you, and we praise you. And, God, we come to you as, as your children coming to a parent seeking the way. And God, it would be so wonderful if you could just write things down and just slip it to us. But I know that instead you provide us with the answers if our eyes are open, if our hearts are open, if we're listening. And so God, we just pray for the anointing that Pastor Keith talked about. 
And God, we pray that we are not only a blessing, but we are blessed, as he said. I think that that's just amazing, that it's reciprocal. And so, God, we just ask for that anointing and that blessing to happen. And, God, we lift up Pastor Keith, and we ask, God, that you would continue to bless him, lift him up, retain and, and encourage his ministries and his energy. We lift up the lay leaders of this church, and we lift up those whose hearts are being tugged by you, God that they might step forward and also become leaders. God, we pray for all of those people who've walked through these doors tonight to hear your word, to seek fellowship among their peers. And so, God, we just thank you. We thank you for that. And, God, we thank you for this music and the stories and the ability to be here. God, you are amazing, and we praise you. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, this next song is one that I hope you all join me with. It's uh, joining with me. It is Amazing Grace to a little different twist of House of the Rising Sun. How many know this song? Well, both versions, I guess, huh? Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saves someone like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear. That grace of here, the hour I first believed. All right. Here we go. From many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there, Ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. With no less grace to sing God's praise than when we first begun. All right. Give God a hand, will ya? say it's a wonderful thing to be able to worship in honesty and truth. Amen. Well, the one thing that uh, Linda was telling you about that we're going to talk about stories and, uh, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic and I've been sober over 12 years uh, by the grace of God and by the help of a 12-step program. And uh, any of you people that have experienced the same thing I have know that we got lots of stories, amen? Yeah. Well, I just want to tell you a little bit about my story. And uh, it was in 1990 that I went to my first treatment center. And, uh, you know, it was one of those where you stay locked up for in it. And, you know, when you go out, you're kind of scared. But, you know, I stayed sober a year and a half. And life was really great. And it was so good that I thought that, you know, alcohol could, which is my drug of choice, I thought that alcohol, <laughs> alcohol could not have been my problem and had to be women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went back out and tested the waters again, did a lot more, not just a little, but a lot more research. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yes. 
and uh, my research was a failed experiment, but you know, the thing about it is, uh, as I went out, back in and out, and I'd stay sober like two years, and I'd go out for all kinds of reasons, you know, and it didn't matter what the reason, but the last time that I got sober, and the one thing I want to tell you about MCC, and I've been around MCC for a while, uh, and I was living in Kansas City, and the one thing that I always say about them, they helped save my life too, because you know what, when I walked in, they welcomed me back, you know, and then I'd walk back out, you know, I'd be around for a year or two, and then I'd be gone, and when I walked back in two years later, they loved me back again, and so, you know, I really appreciate the people with MCC, and, uh, but the last time, I was getting really, really depressed, you know, emotionally, thinking that, you know, this, I just wasn't going to be able to do this. I was not going to be able to stay sober. And yes, I wanted those things that those people had, but I just thought that, you know, I was a failure and couldn't stick with something. Uh, so, came to 1999, and I decided I was going to stop drinking. And you know, I'm telling a drinking story, but I want to tell you that it doesn't matter what you struggle with. It doesn't matter whether you tell yourself today, I'm not going to have that, you know, chocolate bar. <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the same struggles that we go through. And for me, with alcohol, I'd say, oh, I'll, just, I'll start tomorrow. You know. But anyway, it was Halloween. And uh, the day before Halloween, um, my partner at the time, I had stopped drinking for like three days and I was having a really hard time and one of my car keys and he said no and so I decided that I was going to just ride my bicycle to the liquor store and like I said, I was very depressed about the fact that I couldn't stay sober and I thought, you know what, nothing's going to change in my life. So I got on this bicycle and I got on it and I rode down the end of the block, the tire was flat. Well, now I'm really mad take it back. I think I'm going to walk that two miles to that dang liquor store and, you know, I'm going to take this stuff and I'm going to just be over it. Well, about that time, my roommate's parents pull up, who had said they weren't coming down that day to help us work on the yard. Well, now I'm really mad because, you know, gosh darn it, really foiled my plan. But we worked on the yard and, you know what, later on that day, I felt better. However, I did go back out. And on Halloween, really intoxicated and drove around and ended up in a yard and uh, two days later I ended up at a, my last treatment center to this day um, and I didn't know that anything would be different but the one thing I realized during all those times of trials that you know what it's kind of like the bicycle that God was still doing for me what I couldn't do for myself, okay? I couldn't not drink, but he, you know, God was really trying to, <laughs> trying to get the Susie, you know, everywhere possible to try to get this thing right. And so when I was in treatment, my partner went to the people's house and they said, uh, you know, she's talking to them about the insurance. The lady came outside and she said, oh my gosh, she said, I was very frightened when I came outside and saw the tracks in the yard that were 10 feet from running into my little boy's bedroom. And so Amanda came back and told me that. And I was just waiting for what the lady was going to say next. Amanda said, well, she's in Valley Hope in Atchison, Kansas. And the woman said, tell her we'll pray for her. Because my brother went through Valley Hope six years ago, and he's still sober today. So of all the things that the woman could have said when I almost could have really, really seriously hurt her son, she was going to pray for me. And so the next day I went down, this pastor came to church, came to the treatment center to talk to us, and went to his church the next day. And people say, what was different? Well, I don't know if it was the message, the music. I don't know if it was almost running into the little boy's bedroom. But what I do know was that I was finally ready to surrender and God was waiting right there for me. And so those of you that know about half measures, they never do work.
matter how much you want them to. And this is a song that I wrote when I was three years sober called Nothing Compares. So now it's been three years since I first looked in the mirror, saw a face I didn't know, the one that scared me so. But now when I look and see Someone who's been set free By the light that kept me bound By the things that kept me down And now nothing compares to the way it used to be Nothing's the same since Jesus rescued me I was lost but now I'm found He turned my life around And now nothing compares To the way it used to be It was early in November Not so long ago I was sitting in a church Feeling all alone So I cried take me here I am and he said child I have been waiting for you welcome home and now nothing compares to the way it used to be nothing's the same since Jesus rescued me I was lost but now I'm found turn my life around and now nothing compares to the way it used to be now I say please every morning and I say thank you every night and I won't forget where I came from for the grace of God go I I want to thank him for the things he's done the things he's yet to do I want to spread his love to everyone so they can know him too and now nothing compares to the way it used to be nothing's the same since Jesus rescued me I was lost but now Turn my life around And now nothing compares to the way it used to be Sometimes I still have struggles And sometimes I'm still afraid But I know that God is with me And together we'll find You know, it was one of those things where I hadn't written any songs for a long time. And I was trying to write a song, trying to write a song. And, you know, it was a God thing. And I told the story of what had happened and the story of what it was like. So kind of the beginning and the where I was at in that third year. Well, this next song is one that uh, I wrote when I was nine years sober. And uh, it's called, But Now I Know. Now, you might think, you know, that could be a kind of a tricky title, But Now I Know. Not really, I don't know a thing. But, <laughs> but what I do know is how my life has changed. It's hard to believe it's been
been nine years now Doesn't seem that long ago Since I saw myself in the mirror I didn't recognize the face I saw But now I know that I've been changed And my life is not the same God made me where I was When God found me on my knees Who I am now is who I never thought that I could be By God's grace and by God's love I've been set free Try to live my life in honesty and truth. I trust God to see me through. I say prayers, I read the word, I ask forgiveness for the wrong things that I do in my life. But now I know that I've been changed. And my life is not the same God met me where I was When God found me on my knees Who I am now is who I never thought that I could be By God's grace and by God's love I've been set free And this is what worked for me if you wonder if your life can change If you try and try before Just surrender and ask God in your heart God will love you back to life Now I know that I've been changed and my life is not the same God met me where I was When God found me on my knees Who I am now is who I never thought that I could be By God's grace and by God's love I've been set free You know, that, that, that is true, you know. And it doesn't mean that I don't have struggles because, you know what, Lord knows that we all have those. Life is still life, you know. There are still challenges every day. And, uh, but when you know you're not alone, it makes the journey easier. And this next song is one that, you know, I wrote, and it's called Life is a Journey because, you know what, sometimes we all get so busy and wrapped up in things that go from here, go from there that we forget about some of the most important things in life. So you know what? You don't want to miss the journey. you got to slow down. Too busy for this, too busy for that. Too much stuff to do, God fills the pain. No time to do this, no time to do that. We live in a world that's so fast. You gotta slow down and enjoy the ride Cause you don't wanna miss the journey Because life is a journey 
We're part of God's great plan. Life's not about the things you have or you don't have. We need to laugh, we need to love, we need to grow. We need to follow God wherever God wants us to go. We need to trust God and we need to take it slow because it's all about the journey. Your schedule is booked. You don't have the time to fit anymore in your life. No time for the people that could help you grow. No time for the friends you used to know. You gotta slow down and enjoy the ride. Cause you don't wanna miss the journey. Because life is a journey. We're part of God's great plan. Life's not about the things you have or you don't have. We need to laugh, we need to love, we need to grow. We need to follow God wherever God wants us to go. We need to trust God and we need to take it slow because it's all about the journey. This is the important verse. The purpose in life is not what gets done. It's not about what gets left undone. Love God more each day. In Christ we find out who we are, what we're living for. You gotta slow down and enjoy the ride. Cause the joy, the joy is in the journey. Life is a journey. We're part of God's great plan. Life's not about the things you have or you don't have. We need to laugh, we need to love, we need to grow. We need to follow God wherever God wants us to go. We need to trust God and we need to take it slow. Because it's all about the journey. Amen. Now my lovely wife's going to join me up here. Oh, absolutely. Well, uh, Susie's right with that song that uh, we personally were on our own journey. Uh, we were a full-time touring ministry. We do continue to tour uh, once a weekend right now because uh, Susie is working at a church in Florida, helping them to move from a traditional to a contemporary service. And they've agreed to let her go one one weekend a month. <laughs> but they just now realize what that looks like. And so they said, are you sure you have to go <laughs> one weekend a month? Yes. So this is such a blessing for us to be out. And um, a story that we're going to share in part tonight uh, began in 2010. And at that time, uh, we had just completed an 18-month national tour, and that included Susie singing at General Conference in Acapulco. And during that time, we met many people who changed their lives. Um, one, of the, one of the blessings certainly is going to churches and hearing other people's stories. I mean, that's, that's a rich part of our, our jobs. And uh, the last church that we visited in 2010 was The Rock in Chattanooga, and uh, it's on November 21st. Our very last church visit that year is when it, the story begins today. And it was at this last uh, visit in Chattanooga when God put us unexpectedly into what we're calling a waiting room. And for us, a waiting room was when life takes an unexpected turn. And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that, but it's like you have all of this forward momentum and then all of a sudden life stops and you have this internal confusion 
and you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing, and then it results in immobility. Mm -hmm. You're just stuck. You're frozen. And for us, it, this immobility was because we've been on this road. We've been all across the United States, and all of a sudden, our tour ended. And it wasn't because churches were not calling us. But we had this great sensation that we had been called home. And at that time, home was Omaha, Nebraska. And that's when we began to wait impatiently for God. And we're going to do a couple songs in between this talking. This is a song by Chris Tomlin. And this is a song that kept resonating with us over that year's time when we were stuck and uh, waiting impatiently for God to uh, come and show us Move us along. Get us out of this place. And the interesting thing is we had bought this book uh, at a grocery store a couple years prior. And it's called God, You're Late Again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that book came in handy that year. <laughs> There's a reading in Jeremiah that talks about how God has a plan for each of us. And Susie and I always believed that God had a plan for us, and we held tight to that belief uh, when we were in this place uh, where we just didn't know where we were supposed to be other than at home. You know, it was really the, hard, the hardest thing for us was we were trying to figure our way out. Right. And the harder we tried, the more impatient we became. Yeah and the longer we waited. Yes. Um, and so if I were to try to describe uh, all of the mixed emotions that we have, the one thing that I can equate it to was this one time when Susie and I were stuck on an elevator together. And I don't know if any, any of you have ever been stuck in an elevator before? Yes, some head nodding going on, yes. Be glad for the people that haven't. <laughs> right. So we were in Omaha's tallest building. It's 22 floors. I think it's the tallest building in Nebraska. And uh, we got stuck somewhere between 20 and 21. And we were dressed for a gala event that night. So I was in a gown, and Susie was all dressed up, and she had on earrings and a necklace that drag queens had been admiring that night. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, we had a friend with us. And so when the elevator shook to a halt, 
we each reacted differently. And so our friend we discovered was claustrophobic and he started breathing heavily and he grabbed the emergency line he started dialing we're stuck we're stuck he was very anxious and so he's hyperventilating my lovely wife all of a sudden thinks that she's linda what is her name uh bionic woman my or super yeah <laughs> either bionic woman or superwoman all of a sudden i see her squeeze her fingers in the elevator doors and she starts prying them apart. I get very nervous because I began to see the light of day, and I'm thinking she's going to squeeze my womanly body through that little hole. My feet are going to be stuck outside that backside. <laughs> Thank goodness she did not make that much effort and never got the, the door open. And so for myself, <coughs> I just folded my arms, and I leaned against the wall, and I waited for somebody to rescue us. You know, and waiting does uh, elicit so many different emotions, yeah. you know. Anxiety, it also makes you irritable. Oh, I can give you a testimony on Susie's irritability. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> you know, it also provides excitement and uh, yeah. takes a lot of energy. And we decided that to combat those emotions, we decided that we were going to eat popcorn and chocolate bars. Every night. <laughs> Every yep. night. Yep. And so. You know, we started with this little bowl of popcorn and this, you know, a regular size candy bar piece. Right, and actually, and this is so unhealthy. Please do not do this diet. It has terrible repercussions. So we went to a very large popcorn bowl and the biggest chocolate candy bar mm -hmm. you can find. Giant. Each. Yes, the giant size mm -hmm. each. And then we had to join a gym by the end of the year. Oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't healthy. Now we're in Florida. We're supposed to exercise all the time. We've been there seven months and uh, we used Still are trying to get on the routine <laughs> of, <laughs> yes, of exercising. No excuse there. No, I know. Mm -hmm. And so I have to tell you about some of the lessons we learned last year. Um, one of the lessons we learned came from the devotional Susie was telling me about. And um, we, we knew that one of the things that would get us through was prayer. We're very, um, we're not consistent, but we're very loyal with our prayer life. And as we read the devotional and we prayed, we realized that God was preparing us for something. We didn't know what it was. And that we needed to stop let, letting life drift by. We needed to live life deliberately. And so I was the first person of the two of us that learned my lesson. And in May a year ago, in 2011, some of you may have uh, heard about the EF5 tornado that hit Joplin, Missouri, and had a direct hit on our sister church, Spirit of Christ MCC. And I was one of the first MCC responders to assist Pastor, S uh, Pastor Steve Yuri, uh, Pastor Kurt Krieger from Spirit of Hope in Kansas City, and I went there three days after the tornado. And um, it was amazing that I had the week off by, by a divine coincidence from work. And I was able to remain there, and I, I worked with Pastor Kurt. And then, for those of you who are, uh, Mike was telling me about the um, your network. Uh, for those of you who are part of a network, the Heartland Network just really came together and really bonded during this time. And one of the things that I witnessed was grace. I saw grace in all of these people who were bringing food and water and dog food, I mean, it was just amazing everything that I witnessed and so much destruction that I can never even imagine experiencing. And that was life-changing for me, to witness people so selflessly giving up their time and their money and their love for people that they've never met and never will meet. And people came from Omaha, from Wichita, from St. Louis, from Kansas City. People came during the week to help out, and then on the Sunday following that, their church was destroyed also, and they were in the basement at the time that the, the tornado came through, actually. They were worshiping, and they did make it to the basement. Uh, and when they came up, there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we had a worship service in the park uh, on that Sunday, and lots of musicians and people, pastors and everything came together to put mm -hmm. that service together, which was wonderful that all these people came together to help. All right, and... Um, I think, so 
my hindsight, when I look at this in terms of what God had been preparing me for, it may have just been this one slice of time that I realized that I was supposed to be able to do ministry without Susie. And that may seem a bit trivial, but we had been uh, doing Brenner Beckstead ministry since 2005, always as a team, very solid about that. Um, pastors would sometimes ask me to preach, and I would say, no, we're a team. We never do anything separate. And, um, and I promise I'm not being codependent. But uh, <laughs> It sounds like <laughs> it. I know. It sounded like it when I said it. But I did realize that, in fact, God might have something that would be uniquely different from Susie. And, in fact, I called Susie while I was there the very first night. I said, Susie, please come down. This is so hard. It is so hard. There's so much destruction. And she said, no, I can't. It's too much. This is for you to do. And it never occurred to me. And so I realized at that moment that God might be calling us for two separate things. And it wasn't because I didn't want to go help. It's just that I saw the pictures and I just couldn't imagine the devastation. I mean, it, I, I just wasn't mentally ready to go. I, Plus, I thought that was very honest of you. It really yeah. was. You know, and I did finally go down on the weekend. But, uh, you know, and the thing is true that I realized then, too, that Linda was finding her journey during that year, you know. It wasn't a coincidence that wasn't a coincidence that she was off that week. You know, God had laid this out very carefully, but I wasn't sure what I was doing. However, uh, about a month before we arrived in Chattanooga that in 2010, my stepfather passed away. And uh, after Chattanooga in December, we found out that my dad had my real father, who lives in Florida, uh, had lung cancer. Mm. And so it was really hard to be away from him. And... I ended up going down there and uh, staying with him. But it put a new perspective on our journey because I realized that if we were traveling around, I wouldn't be able to drop everything and go stay with him and, and, and be with him. So I started to see where I was going in my waiting room. Right. You know, the thing we missed was living purposefully, though, for so long of a time, trying to figure that out. Right, and I think that the story was starting to unfold then. Well, while Susie is moving to the piano, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the song that she's getting ready to do. Uh, it's called Blessings, and it's by Laura Story, and you may have heard it on uh, the radio. But she wrote this song after praying for years for healing for her <coughs> husband, who has a brain tumor. And in an interview, she said that uh, during all of these prayers, that she realized that she can't judge God based on her circumstances and that this event, this praying for the healing actually helped her to understand that one of the things she's supposed to do is have a reliance on God. We pray for blessings We pray for peace Comfort for family protection while we sleep we pray for healing for prosperity we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering and all the while you hear each broken need your love is way too much Give us lesser things Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops What if your healing comes through tears What if a thousand sleepless nights Are what it takes to know you're near What if trials of this life Are your mercies in disguise We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. We cry out in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not enough. And all the while, you hear each desperate plea. And long that we'd have faith 
to believe Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops What if your healing comes through tears What if a thousand sleepless nights Are what it takes to know you're near What if trials of this life Are your mercies in disguise When friends betray us When darkness seems to win We know the pain reminds this heart That this is not, this is not our our blessings come through raindrops what if our healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near what if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is a revealing of a greater thirst this world can satisfy what if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise? Susie moved in with her dad uh, a year ago, June, to help care for him. And I think that was one of the best decisions that we made as a family. And um, his health was declining pretty quickly. And I know that, Susie, you learned a lot about your ministry during that time. And I think that you're right. Now we surrender to what your role was supposed to be because Susie and I have never lived apart. And now... On top of me being a chaplain on my own, now she moved to Florida uh, for the next four months. And so during one of my visits, they would ask me if I would pray. And uh, Susie's, dad, uh, d d Susie's dad's name is Sonny. And so Sonny's bed was in the living room, and, and we gathered around his bed, and it was Susie and his wife and myself. And I thought, what shall I pray for? Because he was very sick, and I decided... I would pray for comfort. And so we were gathered around, and I was praying, and we, we were done. Sonny looked up, and he said, well, he's been giving it thought. And the best way for him to be comforted is if he could take us all with him. And I thought, <laughs> I thought, oh, my. But the <laughs> alarm on Susie and Rita's face was pretty astonishing. And he said, okay, if I can't take all of you, I'll at least take my wife. And <laughs> she looked really <laughs> worried. <laughs> Sonny was bedridden, so she was safe. I said, Sonny, it might be true that you're going to arrive first, but I assure you we will eventually all be in the same place. And while I was with my dad, you know, there was a lot of joy. There was a lot of tears. There were a lot of memories made, you know. But the most amazing thing was that I was blessed to be holding my dad's hand when he passed away. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that was the biggest gift God could ever have given me. Mm -hmm. And for me... That made my waiting room, you know, the purpose of my waiting room right. all come to fruition because I got to be there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was something that I, I will cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, excuse me. What? <laughs> no. No. I'm sorry. We're having a vote and I just won. All right. So. <laughs> 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 All right, so I just want to say that um, we just have a couple of songs left, and this is my very favorite song, and so I'm making her sing it for me. Um, so one, you, thank you, right there, right there. So everything ended, ended for us on November 21st, 2010, and it's a God moment when 
our waiting room door opened actually on November 21st, 2011. And we knew on that day how all of the intricacies of God's plan had been revealed to us. And I was shocked and amazed that in one year's time we were able to see that revelation. And um, the song that Susie is about to play for you uh, is a song of healing, right? It was actually the first, um, having lost both of my dads within a year's time. It was very difficult, and uh, this was my healing moment, my beginning of my healing when I wrote this song. It's called My Two Dads, and I said, let's skip this one. And Linda voted no. <laughs> well, I was blessed to have two men in my life. I was each one's daughter And I know, yes I know They were not very much alike But they always taught me wrong from right And they helped to make me who I am And I won't forget and never started in October of last year when my first dad passed away and though I knew yes I knew it was coming I wasn't ready for that day the gift you gave to me as a child love he shared changed my life and he said it's free it's free it's free god gave a son to live and die for you and me i know you'll find the peace and time that i have given me found in mine it's free yeah it's free dad passed away this last September and I was blessed to be holding his hand and I passed on the gift my first dad gave to me the love God gives so generously and the thing he gave to me when I was grown up was the gift of unconditional love and he said it's free it's free it's free i give my love to you unconditionally it doesn't matter who you love it only matters that you love because it's free yeah it's free singing the other one he is praying and they said it's free it's free it's free the love we have for you is free one gave me unconditional love the other gave me god above cause it's free And the one thing that my dad in Florida loved Linda and I, called her his daughter-in-law, and that was one thing we miss because we had that love here and was accepted so much in Florida. So uh, that's probably one of the biggest things that we miss. Plus he sang, and I sang with him. That was a beautiful gift, too. Right. So Absolutely. And she just wrote this song not long ago. And so, honey, thank you very much for sharing that. Well, after November 21st, we moved to Florida, and we're back, we're back on the road again. 
And I have to tell you that one of the songs, we, we, we've actually performed a couple of songs here tonight that really emulated this journey that we've been on, but one of the songs that we'll be closing with uh, tonight, we just have uh, two more songs, is Testify to Love by Avaline. And we believe that God tells us to go out and tell everybody the good news, that God loves each one of us unconditionally and that we are all of God's children. And if you happen to know the words to this song, sing along. I love it that you're clappers. You all just do your own thing because if you follow me, you're in trouble. So, <laughs> but you'll love this song if you don't know it. And remember that, you know what? You might be the only Jesus somebody sees. Colors of the rainbow, all the voices of the wind, every dream that reaches out, reaches out to find where love begins, With every word of every story, every star in every sky. Every corner of creation lives to testify. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. I'll be a witness in the silences. The words are not enough. With every breath I take, I will give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. From the mountains to the valleys, yeah. From the rivers to the seas. Every hand that reaches out, every hand that reaches out to offer peace. Every simple hand. Every step to think and come All the hope and every heart will Speak what love has done For as long as I shall live I will testify to love I'll be a witness in the silences The words are not enough With every breath I take We'll give thanks to God above, for as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. And so God does call us to go out and, and to testify to God's love, to be the only Jesus that some people might see that day, to bring joy to other people. And if you are in the midst of your own, your own waiting room, go up to God in prayer. As long as I shall live, I will testify to love. I'll be a witness in the silence. Words are not enough. With every breath I take, I will give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. I'll be a witness in the silence. Words are not enough. With every breath I take, we'll give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify. Love. That's what we can do. Testify to love. Amen. With every breath I take, we'll give thanks to God above. For as long as I shall live, I will testify. To have you know that what I have in the bag is to share. How about that? 
you know, these ladies have come a long ways and they are traveling even farther after worship tonight to Mobile, Alabama. So they'll be ready for a concert in the morning and then traveling back to New Orleans tomorrow afternoon to do a concert tomorrow night and then flying out Monday morning, Monday night. So they have a little time here. And we're just so glad that, they, that God has called them. Amen. And that if we are in a waiting room, that God always has the answer and God always has the perfect timing. And while they are giving of themselves, it comes time for us to give a little something back. Now, they don't, they're not charging for the concert. They're not charging anything. And they had, you know, flights and rental car and all of that kind of stuff. And if I was going to the River Center tonight to see this concert, hmm, how much would I have paid? <laughs> well, and you know what? That's the kind of thing that I, I, I think about when it comes to offerings, and we are good givers in this church, so I hope that you will take just a moment and let's breathe a word of prayer as you get prepared. God, thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for bringing Susie and Linda to us and for them sharing their story. Thank you for the blessings in their lives, and thank you for them being a blessing now in ours. And God, we pray that you will bless each one in this place as we get ready and prepare our hearts and prepare our minds for what we need to give back to them. We pray that you will bless now in this offering, multiply it over and over and over again. Make it bigger than we even can think or imagine. And God, I pray that you will just bless these ladies on their journey. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, while you're giving them, getting ready to give them a gift, the ushers are coming, we wanted to leave you, get, let you have a little something oh, okay. to remember us by. And I know you're traveling on a plane, so we had, right. to, we had to make it things. It'll go in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go in your purse. So she's going to sing again while we give. Amen. <laughs> give them another hand. Hey, this is a song that was, is a little bit different, but it really talks about when we all can love who we want to love, then we shall be free. Well, this ain't coming from no prophet. Just an ordinary girl. But when I close my eyes, I see. I see the way this world shall be. When we all in hand. All right. Sing along if you know it. When the last child cries for a crust of bread. When the last man dies for just words that he said. When there's shelter over the poorest dead. We shall be free. When the last thing we notice the color of skin when the first thing we look for is the beauty within when the skies and the oceans are clean again we shall be free sing it out oh, 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 oh. we shall be free we shall be free have a little faith have a little faith walk proud walk proud we shall be free We're free to love anyone we choose When this world's big enough for all different views When we all can worship from our own kind of view We shall be free Oh, 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 oh we shall be free Sing it out We shall be free Have a little faith Have a little faith Walk proud Walk proud we shall be free and when money talks for the very last time and when nobody wants a step behind when there's only one race and that's humankind we shall be free you know what let's stand up yes and body or spirit that's right You don't have to stand up, you got 
Close it out with one more song. You can be seated or you can stand up. It's a great song. And listen to me, it's a great song. It is. It's a guitar song. And, uh, it's, it's certainly is. All right. Good boy, Mr. Bell. <laughs> Call my name, I'll be there in a hurry. That you can't depend, don't have to worry, cause you know that there ain't no mountain high enough. You know there ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. My love is alive down in your heart, although we're far apart. If you ever need a helping hand I'll be there on the double Fast as I can Cause you know that there ain't no mountain high enough You know there ain't no valley low enough Ain't no river wide enough To keep me from getting to you Ain't no mountain high enough Ain't no valley low enough Ain't no river wide enough Keep me from you, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough, keep me from you, ain't no mountain high enough, you know there ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. May God continue to bless each of us richly, amen, thank you so much for allowing us to come and worship with you tonight. Amen. I'm so glad that you ladies have come to bless us. I know I've been blessed. And you can take them home with you. <laughs> or you can take some of them home with you, at least their voices. If you'll notice over here by the sound booth, they have a table set up. They have CDs. They have T-shirts. There's some great T-shirts over there. And uh, I know some of you are staying for the AA meeting that's starting in about 10 minutes. So we're glad that you came in and, and, and listened and were blessed. And so we hope that you've enjoyed it. And so would you just rise as you're able? We like to hear that, don't we? That's right. That's right. We may have to clear it with the very head of our denomination because... Linda is uh, the personal assistant to Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson. <laughs> but we're glad that even though you both have your own ministries, we're glad God lets you get out every now and then to, to bless all of us that need it. Amen. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for bringing these ladies our way. Thank you for the blessings we've received by their presence here. Thank you for the blessings we've received by your presence here, God. We pray that you will keep them safe on the highways tonight and tomorrow. Let them have traveling mercies throughout the weekend. And God, we pray that the people tomorrow in both of those churches will be just as blessed as we have been tonight. Keep your anointing on them, in them, and flowing through them back out to all of us and all who hear. We ask in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Amen.